Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be doing another Kahoot. It's going to be a very short one. It's going to be going over a and P, anatomy and physiology. And this is going to be the entire Kahoot. I think it's about 10 slides where you have to actually drag your mouse to the location that I'm speaking of. Now, before we get started, as always, I'm going to ask you to please support me and support this channel by liking this video. You're going to love it. So go ahead and press that like button now. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And don't forget, guys, I'm offering next generation NCLEX reviews, one on one tutoring sessions, and consultation sessions. You can reserve your spot by going to my website now. Now, nexusnursinginstitute.com. While you're there, be sure to check out the audio lessons that I have available. Almost daily, you can find me covering a variety of nursing topics on my other social media platforms, such as TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. My handle is the same everywhere, Nexus Nursing, so be sure to check me out there. All right, guys, let's get started. Anatomy and physiology. Okay, drop your pen. Which portion of the following structure is expected to close by two months of age? Go ahead and take your mouse and click on where you expect to be closed by two months of age. Drop your pen, players. Where do you think should be closed by two months? <laughs> I love you guys. All right. So let's talk about this. Okay. This is something you are definitely going to need to know for peds, pediatrics. Okay. So the posterior fontanelle, which is a lot of you guys chose it, this area right here, that's the posterior fontanelle that you expect to close by two months. Now, this fontanelle up here, this is the anterior fontanelle. That one you expect to close um, around 12 to 18 months, but by 18 months, it should be closed. So here, the anterior fontanelle, that should be closed by 18 months. But back here, the posterior fontanelle, that should be closed by two months. Let's keep going. As a nurse, where on the neonatal foot would you obtain a blood sample? You got to get a blood sample from a neonate. Where would you grab it? Go ahead, drop your pin, guys. Click on the area where you would grab that blood sample. I'm so glad I'm doing this. All right, guys. So let's talk about this. First of all, I'm seeing on the live, a lot of you are saying you'll get in the heel, correct? But let's be specific because we're not going to get in the middle of the heel. Like we're not going to be getting that blood right here because guess what? You may hit the bone. You're going to get it on the lateral aspect of the heel. So on the sides where the uh, risk of hitting the bone is a lot less, you're not going to get it right here at the heel. You're going to get it on the lateral side of the heel. Okay. On the edges. Thank you, Cass. All right, your patient just had a cardiac cath and they're starting to bleed from the left femoral access site. Where are you going to apply pressure? Go ahead and uh, click on the area where you would apply pressure. If your patient just had a cardiac cath and they're starting to bleed from the left femoral access site, show me where you're going to uh, apply the pressure. Okay, guys, so let's talk about this. I'm not going to yell. I promise I'm not going to yell. All right, so this is an entrance site for um, that catheter that has been placed, right? And now the patient's bleeding. So where you want to apply pressure is going to be directly above that puncture site. You want to apply pressure about two inches above 
that insertion site to help stop the bleeding, okay? I don't know what's going on over here and over here, guys, but whenever a patient, wherever a patient's bleeding, you want to apply pressure right above that site to stop the bleeding, especially when it comes to the femoral artery. And guys, I gave you a hint. I told you femoral, right? Okay, let's keep going. You guys are doing the most tonight. All right, where would you place your stethoscope to best hear the apical heart rate? You want to best hear the apical heart rate. Where are you going to place your stethoscope? Show me. Okay, so when you want to hear the apical heart rate, it's best to hear it at the apex of the heart. So where you're going to go is to the fifth intercostal space, mid clavicular line. So literally fifth intercostal space, you count one, two, three, four, five, right? And then this is the mid clavicular line. You see this line right here? Mid clavicle, that's mid clavicular line. So after you count five, you go over to the mid clavicular line and this is the area right here that you would place your stethoscope. And that was the best place to hear that apical heart rate, okay? Your patient has appendicitis. Show me where you would expect their pain to be localized for appendicitis. Where would you expect that pain to be localized? Show me. Okay, so the correct answer, guys, when it comes to appendicitis, you expect that pain to be localized in the right lower quadrant. And it's going to be between this is your umbilicus, the belly button, right? And that iliac crest. So right here, right around here, this area right here, this is where you expect you would expect that pain to be localized for the patient with appendicitis. Very good. Where would you expect to hear bronchovesicular breath sounds? You want to hear bronchovesicular breath sounds. Where would you place your stethoscope? Show me. Okay, guys. So the correct answer is right here. That upper third of the sternum, right between um, the scapula, that's where you 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 hear these sounds right here. This is the area, guys. I'm sorry, a couple of you guys on the uh, live is saying I'm going too fast. I'll make sure when it comes to this type of cahoots, I'll I'll give you guys more time to answer. Where would you place your tape measure when you're assessing your patient's abdominal girth? So let's say your patient has something like, you know, ascites, you want to measure the abdominal girth. Where would you place your tape measure? All right. 
The correct answer is right here at the umbilicus, right there at the belly button. If you want to get the most accurate measurement, you're going to do it at the umbilicus. Anyone that's measuring it is going to do it at the umbilicus because if you're the nurse on this shift, you go ahead and do it up here. And then someone who comes after you, they do it down here. There's somebody else that, you know, they do it over here. You're not going to get an accurate reading. But if you do it right there at the umbilic umbilicus, every single time, you're going to get the most accurate measurement. Where would you expect to palpate the liver? You want to know where your patient's liver is. Where would you expect to palpate? Show me. Well, I'm very proud of you because it seems like the slide that you guys got right the most because only half of you guys are wrong. <laughs> All right, so right upper quadrant, right here. This is where you'd be palpating if you wanted to uh, palpate the liver. Your patient fractured the neck of the femur. They had a fall and they fractured the neck of the femur. Where is the femur neck located? Click on the neck of the femur. Show me where the femur neck is located. Take a good look, guys, because I think by the time you're done, it'll be covered up. Okay. So the neck is this area right here. That is your neck, guys. The femur neck, that connects like that round ball to the shaft, okay? It connects this round ball to the shaft. This is the, the neck of the femur right here. Your patient just had a stroke and now they have expressive aphasia. Which portion of the brain do you suspect the stroke occurred? Now, I want you to click on the name either frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe, or temporal lobe. Patient had a stroke. Now they're having expressive aphasia. What portion of the brain do you suspect that the stroke occurred? Okay, so when it comes to expressive aphasia, being able to express yourself verbally, speaking, language, it's right here, this area, the frontal lobe, the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is responsible for verbal language, it's responsible for personality, it's responsible for social behavior, okay? And we're already down to our last question. So your patient's diagnosed with cataracts. Show me which portion of the eye is diseased. Your patient has cataracts. Which portion of the eye is affected? Go ahead and click on it. Show me which portion of the eye is affected when it comes to cataracts. And you all should get that right. I did a, I did a, um, a TikTok on cataract earlier. Okay, guys. So the correct answer is the lens. This area right here is the lens. And that's what's affected. What happens in cataracts, a patient's vision is decreased because there's opacity, there's cloudiness of the lens. And this is the lens right here. So this is the area that would be affected. This video, guys, this was something that I did very quick, very basic a &P that you guys really have to know. So if you struggled with anything that I talked about, first of all, you know, I'm about the meat and potatoes. So if I'm talking about it, that means you need to know it 
by the time you graduate. So make sure you review that information. If you liked this and you want to see more like um, questions such as this, just let me know in the comment section and I'll make more for you. I'll make them longer because I'm seeing that alive on the live. A lot of you guys are saying I've I've been going too fast, so I'll make sure I, I allow more time for you to be able to participate. But guys, that is it. Please let me know what you thought about this in the comments section. Don't forget, I'm now offering Next Generation NCLEX reviews. You can go to my website and book uh, your review right now by going to nexusnursinginstitute.com. If you're currently in a nursing program and you're struggling, or maybe you've graduated, but you just want some one-on-one -on -one attention, you want some tutoring, you can also reserve your spot for tutoring by going to my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. All right, guys, thank you for watching and you'll see me on the next video.